Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. Someone made a comment on one of my YouTube videos recently that um, people like me and Quickie Baby only ever seem to upload videos of games where we're doing well. Well, yeah. <laughs> you come here to be entertained. And while I accept that there's probably some entertainment value in watching somebody play like a donkey and getting his ass kicked, it's not as entertaining as watching a well-played match, whether that be World of Tanks, War Thunder, you know, whatever. And if you really, really want to see me playing World of Tanks badly, then just tune into the live streams on Mondays and Thursdays. I go through enough terrible games in order to get the good stuff that any hankering you may have to see me playing like a donkey can be more than satisfied just by tuning in to watch any of the live streams. However, uh, the point remains, you, you never really see me put a video up uh, unless something particularly funny happens in that video where I'm playing like a donkey. So, challenge therefore was to find a match where, due to whatever reasons I don't do particularly well, but it's still entertaining to watch. And that's where good old Ike comes in. When I live stream with Quickie Baby, and here we are in our Object 704s, Ike is our wingman. He's the guy who makes up the third spot in the platoon. He's in this game in his M103. But Ike is so much more than just a wingman. Oh, and here's me donking my first shot. I aim, I aim, i.e. it's already dead. 1650 credits for that shell, I am never gonna see again. Ike's in this game in his M103. There he is, back there. He's just realised, hang on, what are those two tank destroyers doing? Shit, I'd better go and catch them. Ike's from Norway, and he regularly rounds out the third platoon spot whenever I'm live streaming with Quickie Baby. Ike and Quickie Baby have known each other for years, and they've been playing games together for years, and while he's not quite as good as Quickie Baby, he's a damn sight better than me. Something that has proved invaluable on numerous occasions whenever I need my scrub arse carried in a game of World of Tanks. And boy oh boy oh boy is he going to carry me in this one. And he's not just going to carry me as I fire that IS-8 and do absolutely no damage whatsoever, he's going to carry Quickie Baby as well. <laughs> And now I'm taking all the hits. <sighs> Quickie Baby gets his second kill. Take another hit from the Tiger. Stop. Aim. Shoot. Quickie Baby lunges in front of me to protect me from the Tiger's return shot. And gets his third kill. Meanwhile, Ike is still struggling to catch up with these two nutcases in the Object 704s. We're closing in on the enemy base, we've got a Tiger P spotted. Oh, there's their artillery. Get it, Quickie Baby, get it! Kill the scumbag. There we go, Quickie Baby gets his fourth kill. Quickie Baby, as usual, just faster on the trigger than I am, putting himself in a, a better position in order to be able to take the shots than I do. And he's doing all the damage and he's getting all the kills. As for me, once again, poor positioning, poor timing. I get the killing blow on the Tiger P, but he only had 87 health left, and it cost me almost all of my health. So I'm having a pretty terrible game. Closing in on the T-34-1, I shouldn't be driving along the top of the railway embankment. Any tanks on my left will be able to have shots at me, and I can't even do full damage to him. He gets hit before my shot goes in, and it's another low damage roll. So terrible, terrible, terrible game so far for me. And my poor decision making in this game isn't going to stop there. Now this is a patch 8.9 replay, so that Waffentrager was about to get into cover behind the building, so yep, I fired the shot before it was fully aimed, and obviously it missed. Patch 8.9, you couldn't shoot through structures. So those of you thinking, well, Jingles, you've got 286mm of penetration with your BL-10, just fire through that corrugated tin structure. Nope, that's not going to work. And another low damage roll. <laughs> and oh, shit. Okay. Now, that is a Centurion Mark 7, and he's just fired, and he sees an Object 704 point in his gun at him. But you know just how incredibly troll the gun mantlet of the Centurion Mark 7 is. And that was incredibly lucky. Now what I should be doing here is moving up to take cover behind the wreck of Quickie Baby's Object 704. Instead, with Ike coming around... Oh, 
Oh. And it bounces off his gun mantlet. I knew it was going to bounce off his gun mantlet. I, the, the amount of videos I've put up showing you how shots bounce off the Centurion 7's gun mantlet and... <sighs> terrible, terrible decision making. So now I'm dead. Quickie Baby's dead. It's all down to Ike. Now, it's usually at this point in the live stream where myself and Quickie Baby are dead, and we sit back and we're saying, well, don't want to put you under any pressure or anything, Ike, but you've got to carry the game now. <laughs> and Ike doesn't like being put under pressure. <laughs> Quickie Baby will be offering suggestions as to where he should be positioning his tank, and Ike's just getting flustered. <laughs> He's like, no, shut up, leave me alone, I've got this. And give him his credit, he usually pulls through. Watch this. So, Ike's got no kills, he's got four tier 8 heavies and an E75 to deal with. And while they're all distracted by that nice juicy panther, he nails the first IS-3. Spots the Tiger 2, aims, aims, quick reactions, Lerva comes around the corner, he can kill the Lerva in one shot, and the wreck of the Lerva is now protecting him from the Tiger 2. Tiger 2 realises the threat, Ike switches his fire to the IS-3, the IS-3 fires, bounces off his gun mantlet, Ike kills him as well. Now he's got to chase that Tiger 2 down, and he's got to do it quick before the E-75 joins the party. Unfortunately, while he can't get past the wreck of that lever, he can still use them as cover, while putting more fire into the Tiger 2. He's actually not in a terrible spot here. He's completely, more or less, safe from anybody in front and to the sides. He's just got to keep an eye on where that E-75 is. So he's watching the likely avenues of approach from in the town where the E-75 was last spotted. Moves position, doesn't want to... Oh, there's the E-75. There he is! The E-75, a bit of a donkey, is actually exposing the side of his tank and ignoring Ike. So keeping himself safe from the Tiger II it's another shot into the E-75. E-75 finally seems to realise that he's getting shot on the flank. Turns his gun around. Ike doesn't want to give him the shot. Finishes him off. Keeping the building between himself and the Tiger II at all times, so he was only facing one tank at a time. The whole live stream were on their feet and cheering at this stage of the game, and, you know, Ike really does not like being put under pressure like this. <laughs> And we're both telling him, go on, you pussy, get around the corner, you're in an M103. <laughs> Just charge him down. He's got no, god damn you, leave me alone, I've got this. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, to give him his credit, he does indeed have this. Go on, Ike, do it for Norway. Yeah, there we go. Norwegian justice at its finest. So, massively disappointing game for me. I mean, I did 3,000 damage, which isn't bad, but it should have been so much better. But terrible decision making, poor shooting, resulted in an average game. Quickie Baby didn't do badly either, but the star of that one was the King of Norway, the mighty Ike. At the point where Quickie Baby and I both died, Ike still didn't have a single kill to his name. There were five enemy tanks remaining, and he did nearly 6,000 damage and killed all of them. Not bad for a shy and retiring Norwegian who really, really doesn't like being put under the spotlight. So, there's Ike, the King of Norway, carrying my scrub ass in a patch 8.9 game on Live Oaks in World of Tanks. As always, folks, take care on that battlefield, and I'll catch you next time.